I want to start off by, by telling you a little bit about you know, just exactly where we're coming from in this session and, and give you a, a leveling of the audience here. Uh, Bob and I have come from where you guys are. We're both past network administrators. We've both been in technical roles for most of our careers. And we want to just find out who's in the room today. So can I just get a, a round of applause? Who here considers themselves an administrator, network administrator? <laughs> Some people in the other room as well, as well. Uh, who considers themselves here a manager or somebody of, of a non-technical role? <laughs> you can't clap twice, that's, that's, that's part of the rules, you don't want to clap twice. Uh, well, so we want to just kind of balance the session a little bit for you. you know, we want to make sure you're aware of you know, who's in the room with you. We won't ask you to introduce yourself to your neighbor or anything like that. But, uh, you know, this is a technical session. We're going to talk about some, some automation technologies and, and take you through how RDS can deliver context to our user experiences as, as a service. So, uh, we're going to set up some background and context and talk about management technologies and a little bit about how RAS views the industry and how we're traveling through some, some evolutionary changes right now. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the value of automation and show some demonstrations there. And then we want to show you how you can go back on Monday and use some of this on the first day. We want to show you how you can take some of this right out of here and start implementing it right away with your environment's back home. Consumerization of IT is a, is a trending experience where user preferences are impacting IT strategy. And what this means is more and more than, than ever now, you guys are having to worry about device proliferation, non-standard hardware, user-installed applications, all of this stuff that a user wants to do. They're a smarter generation of workers than they used to be. They're much more dialed into technology than ever before. And we want to provide you guys a platform and ability to provide them what they want with an IT blessed experience, a user context aware experience on the device they choose to use in the location that they choose to work. It's a concept, UIA is a term that's growing in popularity, uh, but that concept of consumerization of IT is where a user also has preferences for the software they use. They want to install their applications on the device they want to use. Sometimes those applications are delivered by IT, more and more they're not. And so we want to be able to provide you an ability to understand what applications are running, in what context and what kind of environment they're running in, and then provide you the ability to understand you know, what are the top ranked applications, you know, which ones do you not know about out there. Profiles. Profiles are something that has become increasingly more complex. They continue to become more problematic. Um, as you go across architectures between HPDs, hosted virtual desktops, and um, environments that are maybe not so much a classic architecture, let alone x 964 profiles are not roaming like they're designed to. And so there's a challenge in managing that profile experience and getting consistent things like application settings, printer settings, and other general things that a user expects to see across the different experiences that they're encountering in their day-to-day -day lives. Through all of this, security and compliance are huge trending issues. More and more today, there are exploits and uh, ways of attacking machines through these new user experiences that we didn't have before. Uh, and because of these trends above it in the list here, you're seeing more and more compromises that are happening more quickly, and putting you in much more red situation kind of reactionary possibilities where you just have to fix something quickly. Overarching all that is compliance. You know, corporate and industry-based compliance or regulatory compliance. That can be vertical-based, you know, health, health sections, for example. Uh, it can also be country-based. Uh, and these are things that you have to worry about for your daily jobs, but you don't want to shut down a user's productivity to keep them compliant. And uh, then finally, user environment management. You know, this kind of summary experience, this client machine, is a summary experience of everything running in the back end. Direct infrastructure, mail, security, application infrastructure. And that is changing consistently. And people are using three and four devices in a day right now. So um, putting even more pressure on delivering them a consistent experience throughout that. <coughs> These things are shaping how we think about delivering services to users. And when we think about the concept of IT as a service, it's very important to understand how we are arriving at those decision points. 
So the first thing is, is plastic management technology enough? You know, is the stuff you have today that is doing software distribution, that is doing inventory, that is doing all those deployments, whether those be physical or virtual based scenarios, is it actually doing enough for you? Is it actually bringing in everything you need for the user to be delivered a context aware, productivity based workspace that goes across the different scenarios we find ourselves in? From devices, through slates, through plastic experiences of desktop, into virtual hosted experiences that are presented to them. Is that consistent technology delivering that for you? Some of the challenges with that plastic management layer today is complex, it's complicated. It's not designed for all of the use case scenarios you're finding your users requesting services through these days. It doesn't translate to them today. It doesn't understand when they swap content or pick it from a different environment. Um, it lacks that ability to truly understand the user in the way they're working. Whether that be an IT provided piece of hardware or something else that they've got to purchase themselves and some kind of bring your own PC experience. So I would challenge you to think about is your plastic management technology you've had for in some cases over a decade, is it delivering everything it can do for you as a user experience service, as an IT as a service, uh, uh, user context or service? And with this plastic management, you know, managing machines, understanding that you know, we had this one machine that a user was given, they logged into it, we built it for them, we sometimes log in ahead of the time to make sure it was all set up, and that was it. They didn't change at all. And then as hypervisor style technologies become you know, possible, the VDI style scenarios, albeit stateful, they weren't in the cooled environment that everybody was trying to achieve, uh, became possible. And as we go through time, different types of virtualization uh, in the client experience have become possible. Things like FinApp, for example, application virtualization technologies, hosted desktops. That brings us to a point where the next logical step is not just separating things like an operating system from hardware, it's not just managing those experiences, but it's understanding how the user's working in the context of where they are. Whether that be location, whether that be device, whatever that may be, it's the next logical step. Now to get to that point in the top right corner, some things have had to happen through the industry. First of all, things like connectivity. It is ubiquitous. You're sitting here today over Wi-Fi, you have several devices that are connected, phones, slates, machines, you walk into kiosks everywhere, you're touching your corporate assets back in your headquarters and into your own environments. That wasn't there a few years ago. User preferences have increased. Those are now shaping IT, not just from how they want to work, but where they want to work. And then finally, infrastructure, you know, putting things publicly available, managing things across public experiences, whether those be trusted or untrusted experiences. Um, is consistently changing and evolving. So as we've gone through this progression and arrived at this, there's been some stuff we've had to have there, or so, so to speak, had to have evolved, uh, to provide us the ability to truly think about that user's context awareness. <clears throat> this brings us to something that we define within RAS as the hybrid client. And the hybrid client, we just, you know, you guys take the decks home with you, so we put the words up here for you. It's a Monday morning, I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but the hybrid client is a summary experience of simultaneous deliveries of different resources that are on-premise and off-premises, physical, virtual, and cloud-based, in a subscription style model, subscription-based services. You guys as IT and as organizations are expected to deliver this hybrid client consistently, securely, and in a very highly productive fashion across whatever device that person prefers to use. And that's a real challenge. And so the hybrid client is something that is evolving today. But we believe we're going to show you today how you can compose and deliver a user workspace experience through these different types of hybrid client demonstrations. And this brings us to really the topic of this we're going to show you here for the rest of the session, this concept of IT as a service. And the visual on the left there is probably a little different than a lot of you have thought about users in the past. Putting the user at the center of the universe and delivering them software and devices and configuration settings, security, in the context that they find themselves in. And this is different. This is not the classically the way we have thought about a user in the past. And we're going to show you today some various technology that allows you to think about a user in this way, providing them application settings and experiences, a collection of services. They might be physical or virtual based, but it's the concept of thinking about your user in the way they want to be thought about, the way they expect to be thought about. <clears throat> okay. Let's talk about automation. Then we'll get into some demos for you. Automation is a huge part of this process because this hybrid client, this IT as a service kind of concept, must be 
highly automated. There are things today you guys are going through that you just don't want to deal with. Things like resetting passwords, changing phone numbers, delivering somebody an application that's already available to them in some way. These are things that you can simply move into a user provision experience where they can request things, be approved, even put in their own information like a phone number, and carry on their day without bothering IT, without calling the help desk. Automation is also a huge source of outages. There's a graphic on the right here, unplanned downtime. 40% of Gartner's opinion of unplanned downtime is based on operator issues. Whether that be syntax inside of a wizard, or a mouse click inadvertently delivered to somewhere, or somebody just logging in the wrong machine, and something following them to that machine that shouldn't. These operator style errors are causing outages, causing downtime. We can remove that, we can alleviate that with degrees of automation in the past, haven't been this level of availability. What I want to get to here is talking about the bottom graphic here and helping you get to a point where you're not spending so much of your resource, time, people, money, on reactive, tactical execution of activities, but you're moving that spend and that focus for your resources, you, know, you guys and your teams, moving that into more of a balanced, strategic approach to things. And to do that by adding automation can be a real success in that experience for you. We think automation is about the IT profession. If we look to an IT profession or IT administrators, what they're doing day to day is taking care of taking care of devices, whether it are virtual machines, physical machines, desktops, or servers. That is a lot of work to get them up and running and to keep them healthy. What he's actually doing on those devices is all kinds of maintenance tasks to keep them healthy. And those tasks can be individual tasks for particular devices, or those tasks can be maintenance tasks that you want to perform on all your devices. So if you have an environment with about a thousand computers, you still have one task and you want to automate it on all your thousand computers. So computer maintenance is a combination of a task that you need to perform for multiple tasks, but you need to schedule it on a particular time. So when you do it in service window, for example. So you need the timing on a task. And of course, you need a target on where do you want to execute this particular task. And the combination of the task with the particular schedule and the target group, we call it job. So, IT administrators need to perform a lot of jobs on their infrastructure for many purposes, including maintenance. Still today, a lot of these kinds of jobs are performed manually especially those that only happen once a week. Why should I automate all those tasks that only happen once a week? I can do it But if you really want to stick to compliance, you want to do this task every time, exactly the same way you need to automate. So that is one very important responsibility of an IT administrator or IT profession. Then the other one. That is that user that is getting more and more attention in IT. Jeff was talking about this user needing more devices, needing more flexibility. So the IT profession also needs to manage the user. So to manage the user, you need to provide the user productivity, which for example is a user account, a mailbox, home directory, membership to groups. Whatever you need to provide your user will make them more productive. So a combination of jobs that needs to be executed on different type of devices, so the home directory should be on the farm server, where the mailbox creation should be executed on the mail server. A sequence of those jobs, that is what people are running. The kind of restaurant. If you go to a restaurant and you had a very good meal, and you go there tomorrow again, you hope that they follow the same recipe as yesterday. So you will have the same experience. 